Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is from our Gospel lesson, especially the last verse from Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, in which Jesus tells us, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the text. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord Christ Jesus, we talk so much about forgiveness in the Christian church, it might be easy to get the idea that our good works don't matter. It would be easy to get the idea that God is up there just ignoring, overlooking our trespasses. He doesn't care about them. They don't bother Him. He's just a, a friendly grandpa who loves to lavish gifts upon his children. But Jesus disabuses us of that notion in this text. He says we have a responsibility. You, he says, are salt and light. We are intended to bring glory to our Father in heaven through righteous lives. Lives of love and service toward our neighbor. And if we have no good works, if we bring forth no righteousness in our lives, then we're like salt that has lost its saltiness. We're like a light that has been hidden and darkened. We are not good for anything in the kingdom of heaven, and we are destined to be cast out of it. Now, works are very important for Jesus. They're crucial to the Christian life. But how do we reconcile that with our understanding of the gospel so clearly expressed elsewhere in Holy Scripture? That we don't enter the kingdom of heaven through works done by us in righteousness, but only through faith in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again for us to win for us the forgiveness of sins. How do we reconcile these two ideas? And what's most terrifying to me is this last portion where Jesus says, I, I haven't come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've come not to abolish them, to, but to fulfill them. And he says, not a tiniest, least bit of the law will pass away until all has been fulfilled. The law is to be kept. It's to be lived. And unless we keep that law and live according to it, even better than do the scribes and the Pharisees, then we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now that's especially frightening because the scribes and the Pharisees were professional law keepers. They were the experts. They were the righteous of the righteous. And Jesus says to us that if we want to enter the kingdom of heaven, our righteousness has to exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. This may seem hopeless, and if left to ourselves, it is hopeless. But Jesus comes through, and there are actually three ways in which, as it turns out, our righteousness can and does exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. For one thing, the scribes and Pharisees did not acknowledge their sinfulness. But we have been brought to repentance by Jesus Christ, and we acknowledge that we deserve wrath and condemnation. That in itself is already exceeding the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. But then we have a righteousness that comes from above. We have the righteousness of Jesus Christ that is ours by faith. And that is something that the scribes and the Pharisees lack because they do not have faith. And so there too, our righteousness can and does exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. But then third and finally, through our righteousness that we receive by faith, God actually creates us anew so that we bring forth good works of love and we actually begin to keep the law. And there too, our righteousness can and does exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. So I'd like to take those one at a time, starting with repentance. See, the scribes and Pharisees were very confident that they lived according to the law. The problem is, they were living according to the wrong law. They were living according to a man-made law, traditions inherited from their fathers. You see, this law that the scribes and the Pharisees kept so well had to do with external regulations, with what you could do on which day, what you couldn't do, what you could and couldn't eat at which time, when to wash your hands and how, 
how much to give as an offering, how much not to give. All these external laws that decreed what we can and can't do with our hands, they're burdensome to be sure, but they are possible. And the scribes and the Pharisees did keep these laws. If we still had these laws today, I dare say that we'd be able to keep them. They'd be burdensome, they'd be difficult, but they would be possible. And we could certainly keep all of these external laws if we wanted to. But those aren't the laws that God is interested in. In our Old Testament lesson, we get a great example of that. The counterparts to the scribes and Pharisees, the Jews of Isaiah's day, had decreed fasts. They were trying to propitiate God, to reconcile Him by denying themselves certain fleshly pleasures. They were abstaining from food for a time. They were, as they would see it, repenting in sackcloth and ashes. But God says He's not interested in that kind of service. He never told them to do that. What God wants is a different kind of law. Not our self-chosen works, the things that we come up with for ourselves, but works that are actually done out of love for our neighbors. Bringing the homeless into our homes, giving food to the hungry, freeing the captives, doing good to those in need. That is the law of God. The law of love for God above all things and the love of our neighbors as ourselves. In that law, the scribes and Pharisees are not keeping. And that law brings us in terror to our knees as we realize that we cannot keep it, that we have not kept it, that our hearts are full of sinful thoughts and desires, things that run contrary to love for God and love for our neighbors. But just realizing that is the first step to becoming more righteous than the scribes and Pharisees. Repentance, recognizing our own sinfulness, our own failure to keep God's law. You see, they're, they're lost in the idea that they are living according to God's law. But Jesus first has to disabuse us of that notion, reveal to us that we stand as sinners condemned before God. But we don't stop there. That's not what God ultimately has in store for us, to be cowering in terror before Him and before the power of His law. No, God wants to raise us up again. And so God has promised to us that if we are contrite for our sins, if we turn away from them, if we recognize our sinfulness, well now He comes to us with a promise of forgiveness and righteousness for Jesus' sake. And there too, our righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees. We have this righteousness by believing in Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead for us. But the scribes and the Pharisees do not believe that. They don't believe that Jesus is their Savior, and why should they? They believe they're keeping the law perfectly. So what need do they have as of a Savior? But we who have repented recognize that we need a Savior from sin and death, and Jesus is that Savior. And how does He save us from sin and death? Well, by fulfilling the law. As we sang in our hymn, as the law must be fulfilled, or we must die despairing, Christ came, and hath God's anger stilled, our human nature sharing. He has for us the law obeyed, and thus the Father's vengeance stayed, which over us impended. Yes, the law has to be fulfilled. Not one iota, not one dot will pass away until all has been fulfilled, and all has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Jesus kept the law for us. Jesus perfectly loved God above all things and loved his neighbor as himself. Indeed, more than himself. Loved his neighbors, the entire world, so much that he would go to the cross and sacrifice his life for the sake of his neighbors, the world. And so Jesus, having fulfilled the law for us and suffered the death that we deserved, has given us his righteousness. He has given us not a human righteousness, but God's divine righteousness. And that righteousness comes to us by faith. So how righteous are you? You are as righteous as God Himself, because God Himself has applied to you His righteousness. In God's sight, you are as righteous as His Son. And so our righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees. As far as heaven exceeds earth, as far as divine righteousness exceeds human righteousness. 
for we have the righteousness of God himself. But then we still have this troublesome bit about being salt and light. Yes, we are forgiven our sins. We do receive the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. But we're still expected to bring forth good works. And how does that fit in all of this? Well, here too, our righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees. Because God has wrought in our hearts a true love for Him and for our neighbors that mirrors that of Jesus Himself. And that is a love that is lacking among the scribes and the Pharisees. The scribes and the Pharisees may fast, they may give a show repentance and sackcloth and ashes, but they are lacking in love for God and for their neighbors. But God makes us new so that our hearts are overflowing with love for one another. Now, again, this love that we bear toward God and toward our neighbors is not what saves us. It's not the righteousness that gets us into heaven. It's righteousness that flows from our forgiveness in Christ, from faith, just like heat and light flow from fire. As we sing in our hymn, Faith alone can justify, works serve our neighbor, and supply the proof that faith is living. Works serve as proof that we truly have faith in Jesus Christ, that He truly has made us anew in the image of His Son. And there's an important thing pointed out in our hymn. Works aren't intended chiefly to serve God. God can do quite well on His own. Our works serve our neighbors. Our works serve for the good of those in need, those around us who require our help. And so the scribes and Pharisees are busy about proving their own righteousness before God. But we who have been made righteous by faith in Jesus Christ are granted by His Spirit the ability to love our neighbors from our hearts. And that love breaks forth in works that benefit one another. Now again, we are not to put our trust in these works that God brings forth in us. We put our trust only in the works of Jesus Christ. And yet, we can see through the miracle of faith and regeneration through the Holy Spirit, we are truly made righteous, not only by faith in Jesus, but also through the new creations that we've been made through Jesus Christ. So does our righteousness exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees? Yes, it does. Both by repenting and turning from our sinful way, recognizing our failure to keep the law, and by receiving the righteousness of Jesus Christ by faith. And then once that has been accomplished, we have an actual righteousness that serves the needs of our neighbors. God grant that we never fear His law, that we trust that His law has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ, and that we recognize it as His good and gracious will for the good of our neighbors, that our righteousness may exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, not for our own glory, but for the glory of our Heavenly Father and for the good of our neighbors. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.